flat roof is insulated by filling the space between the ceiling and the roof using layers of mineral wool 10 centimetres thick. So we have the ceiling panels, the roof and we have sections of mineral wool in between. Name two processes of heat transfer which are reduced by the presence of the mineral wool. Well, first of all, it reduces, it fills up the gap, therefore the air that would previously have existed in this gap cannot move. So it prevents convection. It also prevents heat transfer by conduction. Because of the contact between the ceiling panel and the cold air would be conduction of heat through. It does not prevent radiation. That's the key point. You do not say radiation there because radiation is heat transfer by waves and waves can still pass through the mineral wool. So the two keys there are convection and conduction. The owner of the house is told that a 20 centimetre depth of mineral wool would give much better heat insulation than the 10 centimetres it currently has. So he removes the ceiling panels, adds another 10 centimetres depth to the original 10 centimetres and replaces the ceiling panels squeezing what is now 20 centimetres of insulation into the 10 centimetre gap between the roof and the ceiling. Explain why this will not improve the insulation. Well, mineral wool insulation is effective because it traps air and air is a good insulator. And if you have air trapped and you don't allow it to move, this then provides a good insulation which prevents conduction and convection. However, if you take 10 centimetres more and squeeze it into the same gap, you're squeezing out that trapped air, which is what is the useful part of mineral wool. So if you squeeze that air out, there's less air to insulate, therefore it's not as effective. So how do we condense that into two marks? Trapped air in the mineral wool will be squeezed out And air is a better insulator. And mineral wool itself. So trapped air will be squeezed out of the mineral wool and air is a better insulator than mineral wool. Those are your two main points. The squeezing out of the trapped air and the fact that you're removing the best insulator when you squeeze it out. Kevin is working out at his local leisure centre. He raises the bar and weights the weigh in total 400 newtons. In raising the bar he does 140 joules of work each time. Calculate the vertical height he raises the bar. So we're looking at work done and we're given a weight or a force. First of all, we must always write down the equation that we use. So work is force times distance. And this starts to jog our memory and lead us into the question. So the work he does is 140 joules. The force he's lifting is 400 newtons. And we want to find the distance that he lifts it. So 140 joules equals 400 times d. So 140 divided by 400 gives you the distance, which is 0.35 metres. Now you would get a mark for actually stating the equation. You get a mark for rearranging it correctly. You then get a mark for the figure. And the final mark is for the units, because you will notice you're not given the units here in the question. So the answer is 0.35 metres. So it's a mark for the equation, a mark for rearranging, a mark for the value, and then a mark for the units. Part 2 of that question follows on. Over a period of one minute, raising the bar requires an average power of 84 watts. 
How many times does he lift the bar and weights in this one minute? Now there are several different approaches to this question and I'm going to show you all of them. The first one would be identifying the fact that now we're interested in power. The equation that links power and time is P equals E over T, where T is the time. 84 watts equals the energy divided by one minute. Now one minute, the unit minute is not an SI unit, therefore we must convert it to seconds. So one minute is 60 seconds. So the energy over a minute is 84 times 60, which is 5040 joules of energy over the one minute. In the previous question, we were told we used 140 joules for one lift. If we use up 5,040 joules during one minute, the number of lifts is the total energy divided by the energy per lift, which works out to be 36 lifts. Now, how would your marks be allocated for that question? One for the equation to start with. One for working out the energy used up over a minute. One then for working out that the number of lifts is energy over the full minute divided by energy per lift. And a final mark then for finding that it's 36 lifts. That gives you four marks. We said there was another method. And what you could do the second method is you could work out the time he's lifting weights for a minute. So how long does it take him for one lift? And to do that, we use it's 140 joules per lift. 84 watts gives us 1.67 seconds for one lift. So the number of lifts in one minute is 60 divided by 1.67 which gives you 35. The rounding error is introduced here because we would have 1.6666 repeating. But when we round that we bring in a slight error which only gives us then 35 lifts. Marks allocated there is working out the time for one lift and again in that equation, it's an arrangement of our power equals energy over time equation. So you get one for that. One then for working out correctly, including, including the rounding. One for then doing the ratio of the number of lifts per minute. And one for your final answer. There is a third method for doing this, in case you've used it. Power equals energy over time. This is a more mathematical method. The power was 84 watts, the time was 60 seconds, and the energy used up in that time was 140 joules per lift times N lifts. So then what we could say is 84 times 60 divided by 140 gives you N, so 36 is N. And your marks there would be for one for, there, one for the equation one for rearranging, and one for the final answer. That one's from a more mathematical viewpoint.